Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. The title of the message is, Courage is Necessary. Courage is Necessary. It's very famous. These are famous verses when it comes to courage. Courage is Necessary. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we first of all thank you for Father's salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost which is sealed us until the day of redemption. Amen. We ask you, Lord God, if anyone here or those who are listening online are not saved, they don't know you as their Savior, we ask you that today will be the day of their salvation. Amen. Father God, we ask you that you convict our hearts. Yes. Lord God, help us not to be swayed by the things that are happening in the world or in our lives. But help us to wholly give ourselves unto your word. Help us to focus and pray that you'll protect us from devil's attacks. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Courage. Courage is necessary in serving the Lord. Courage is something that many people lack. When you tell me, you know, I lack courage many times. I become chicken. Christians are known as cowards many times. Even though they profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but when it, it's time to do it in front of people, they get scared. Right? Even those folks who trusted Christ during the days of his ministry here on earth, you know, they trusted Lord, but Pharisees were scared of chief rulers. They, they were saved, but they were cowards. They didn't have courage. Courage is necessary. Then what is courage? We say courage all the time. Courage is knowing the consequences and doing the right thing anyway. So courage is knowing the consequences and doing the right thing anyway. And that right thing you have to know what to do. That's the Word of God. You only know right things from the Word of God. So you can't have courage without the Bible. That's why when it comes to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, you know, before verse 9, the Lord said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So you have to know the book in order to have courage. You know, when you're faced with a choice of doing what's right or wrong, you need courage. When you are faced with choice of honoring God and His Word or not honoring God, you need courage. When, you're, when you have a choice of obeying the Lord or disobeying Him, you need courage. Because many times, every day, situation will bring up where you lose your courage. Courage is necessary to serve the Lord. Without courage, you're not going to do anything for Lord Jesus Christ. And as far as courage is concerned, 
One of the person good example is Queen Victoria. Do you guys know, have you heard of Queen Victoria? You hear about all the other queens. Queen Elizabeth, Queen blah, 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 you know, King, blah, blah, blah. But not many people talk about Queen Victoria. Why? Liberals hate her. Why? Because general people who don't know about her, or who knows about her actually, hate her. Why? Because she stood for King James Bible. When it comes to national prosperity and success, there's no doubt that Lord blesses the nation that follows the book. Do you know why America was blessed? Not because of capitalism, not because of constitution, not because of none of that. Number one thing, because the nation followed the book. Amen. And it still has some remnant of people who still follow the book. That's why this nation hasn't gone straight down to hell completely. It will get there, yeah. right? But that's how this nation was founded. And you know where King James Bible came from? England. England was at the height of its power and influence as an empire under whom? Trivia. Under Queen Victoria. You know? Why? Why do you think? Because she did more to promote King, ja King James Bible than any other leaders. Any other leaders combined during that time. That's how influential and how courageous she was when she stood for the Word of God, King James Bible. So Queen Victoria kept a copy of the King James Bible on a little table beside her throne. She's better than you and me, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes you're, you, you and I are like a weekly Christians, right? Maybe bi-weekly, I mean double-weekly, I don't know what the word is, you know, if you come Wednesdays, right? You know, you bring your Bible Sunday, you put it somewhere, you know, where the TV stand is, and then you don't bring it back, or, you know, you put it in a you know, bookcase. But her, she always kept the copy of King James Bible on a little table beside her throne. And one time when a Zulu chief from South Africa visited her and asked her what made her people so great. Think about it. You know, this empire, England empire, where the sun never sets, you know, this chief from, I mean, Zulu chief from South Africa asked, what's the secret, right? You know, sometimes people will come and ask you when you're successful, yeah. what is the secret, you know? How'd you make so much money? How'd you go far in the career? How are you getting such a good grade, right? And you have your own answers, right? So Queen Victoria didn't say a word. She just pointed to the book. And she pointed to the King James Bible. Amen. The King James Bible built the empire. That's what it did. You know, Queen Victoria wouldn't trade with a country unless it allowed Bibles to be distributed. Can you believe it? That's good. Can you think of any you know, more recent leaders who says, you know what, I'm not going to do any business with you unless King James Bible can be distributed in your country. You know? Next leader should be like that, right? Yeah. Talk to Kim Jong-un, North Korea, right? Hey, I'm not going to deal with you unless you let me, you know, unless you allow Bibles to be distributed. And we're not talking about NIVs here. No NASB, we're talking about King James Bible, Amen. 1611, and no New King James Bible. That's a junk too. Yeah. You know, it's not the same. Right. She was responsible for the worldwide right? distribution of the King James Bible during her time. Think about it. I mean, it was something like 8 million copies a year through a reign of 63 years. I mean, that's a, that's a, think about it, right? It's hard for us to count one through million. I don't even know how long it would take, right? Yeah. That's why Marxists, Libertines, liberals hate her. And they mock the you know, mid-Victorian era and mid-Victorian morality. That's why you don't hear it too much, right? Because she stood for King James Bible. They hate her guts by sticking to the book. Do people hate you because you stick to the book? I mean, you need to have that kind of testimony in your life as a Christian. Because you're standing by the book, you stick to the book, you stand up for the book, people hate you. And that's a great thing. Yes. Right? 
I mean, just simple thing. We're against homosexuality, yes. right? Bible says so. Amen. They hate you for it. They hate you for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I shared it before in one of my political science classes when I was going to college. They said, okay, for homosexuality, stand there. Against homosexuality, stand there. There were like 30 students in the class. Like 25 of them stood on the four, and then five stood on the against. And then professor asked, why are you against it? Because Bible says so. <laughs> that was it, you know. The other 25 could hate me, even the five that were with me. Yeah. You know, they hate me because of the, you know. I, I, you know, if, if you're going to be hated as a Christian, have courage by standing up for the word of God. Just like Queen Victoria. You know, I mean... I never really thought about the name Victoria too much until, you know, start studying about Queen Victoria. Right? You have some, you know, morals and things to hold up to. During her reign, it was said that the sun never set on the British Empire. When the sun set in England, it rose in Canada. When it set in Canada, it rose in Australia. When it set in Australia, it rose in India. When it set in India, it rose in South Africa. And when it set in Johannesburg, it rose in London. So it never set. However, now it's no way. It's set now. Uh, Queen Victoria passed away in 1901. And then a couple years later, in 1904, that British Empire dumped the King James Bible and started promoting corrupt Westcott Hort text. And when that happened, what happened? God dumped the British Empire and took away every colonial holding it had. When you don't stand and when you don't have courage to stand for the book, eventually you're going to be dumped. You're like, oh, no, 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 I'm a child of God. I have Christ in me. You know? But if you don't do anything about it, nothing's going to happen. Not anything about it, and you actually go against it. You know, when you're in a, put in a spot, because you will be, because God will always test you, whether you're for me or not. Yeah. Usually on a daily basis, you know, if you're really close to the Lord. Like, for example, you know, you're, you're passing out a track at a restaurant, you know, fast food, you're waiting for your food to come out. And you give it to someone, and then they go irate on you. How dare you, you know, blah, 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 and then start cussing out, you know, your Lord's name in vain, right? And then you are already willing to pass out to all the folks, you know, in the you know, restaurant, right? You're going to be like, you know, either you stand up and just go through with it, yes. or you're going to just quit, right? What's the... Uh, Opposite of courage, right? You know, quitters. To me, in the ministry, when you're not courageous, when you don't stand for the book, you're just a quitter, right? And quitter equals what? Losers, right? What are a couple words that you and I hate the most to be known as? Loser, you know? I mean, I mean especially men, right? You're not being called a loser, right? Woman as well. Right? That's the one word that people don't want to hear. And also, people hate to be called a quitter. Right? You know? And you don't want to be a, known as a quitter. Right? You want to be someone that, who finishes things. Yes. There is an example in the Bible, and it's given by an unsaved person who showed great courage. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4. Even an unsaved heathen shows courage. How is it that Bible-believing Christian who has Lord Jesus Christ in you, who has Holy Ghost in you, don't show any courage? It's shame on you and shame on me over and over. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 9. This is coming from a bunch of idol-worshipping heathen 
but they give a good advice for you and me. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 9. Be strong and quit yourself like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have seen to you. Quit yourself like men and fight. So the Jews had brought out the Ark of the Covenant in their battle with the Philistines. And the Philistines knew what happened to the enemies of Israel when Moses and Joshua hauled it around. So they already knew. They knew the end. We're going to lose and we're going to die. And these are the people. I mean, they're fighting despite, despite the fact that it seemed doomed to failure. But they ended up winning the battle because the Israelites were treating the ark as an idol. But Philistines didn't know that. They fought despite the fact that they were going to lose. They're going to die. Now, before you dismiss, you know, this coming from a heathen, we have the same advice from Apostle Paul, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. I mean, are you courageous today? Or are you just a chicken running around? with your head covered with a blanket. If you're not standing up for the book, if you're not standing up for Lord Jesus Christ, literally, you're no better than the Philistines out there. You call yourself a bible believing Christian, but you don't stand up for the Word of God? Then don't call yourself a bible believing Christian. I mean, if I don't preach the Bible, if I don't act like the Bible, I can't call myself a bible believing Christian. How dare you do that? When your life is full of sin, when your life is full of contradiction, when it comes to the Word of God. Yes. Sure. You don't give out tracts. You don't talk about Lord Jesus Christ. You don't even read the Bible. Come on. You don't even meditate, study. Your priority is the world. Your priority is your pleasantness, pleasure of this world. You don't like church. You don't go to church. I don't see your faces every week. I'm not seeing everybody has a different cases, but if it's a pattern, then something's wrong with you, right? Yes. You say you love the Lord, you show up once or twice a year. I don't think you love the Lord. Can you imagine if I tell my wife, I love you, honey, I'm only going to see you twice a year. And I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm not even going to, you know, no, I want to know anything about you. Trouble. It's, it's done. It's over. Yeah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like man, be strong. See, when it comes to courage, man, unsaved, heathen can teach us something. It's funny, isn't it? When all these unsaved people out in the world preaching about their own causes, right? You have, you have BLMs of the world. You have, you know, gender ideology people of the world. You have your Muslims. You have your Catholics. You have all the other cults out there. But we're the Bible believers, right? It was a traveling for me to hear from evangelist Brother Jack Crayler that as he goes around this United States of America, he finds zeal that people once had for the Lord just dying. The light is becoming dimmer and dimmer. I mean, we're in a Laodicean age where people are just backslidden left and right, yes. apostasy everywhere, yeah. right? But you and I should go on. You and I shouldn't stop because the other so-called Bible believers are stopping. You and I shouldn't stop standing up for the Word of God, King James Bible, because people are scared. You have to be wise about it. I always say we have to have a balanced life, right? Yes. You have to be balanced. You know, as you stand up for the Word of God, 
your other part of life, at your work, at home, at school, should be exemplary as well. Amen. Why would people listen to you at work if you're the laziest worker? King James Bible. You have the worst performance, right? Or barely anything. During work time, you're always on your phone doing, you know, like a games on the computer, and you're trying to witness to them. They're going to laugh at your face. Yeah. At school, you're not doing your best, right? It's okay if you don't get A's all the time. But if you're getting fail all the time, that means you're not doing your best. You have to do your best. I mean, courage is not going to come if you don't do your best, brethren. Every part of your life, you have to do your best. Yes. If you're a father, you have to be the best father. Yes. If you're the mother, you have to be the best mother. You have your husband, you have to be the best husband. If you're a wife, you have to be the best wife. If you're a child, you have to be a best child. If you're a grandma, grandpa, you have to be the best grandma, grandpa, according to the word of God then you have courage. You say, I'm, I don't know why I'm always a coward. I always quit. You know why? Because you don't do your best in every part of your life. How can you expect to have courage? When you have regrets, when you're living in sin, when you have things to hide, you can't have courage. You have to leave it out on the table, on your knees, when you're praying to God. If there are certain things that you're hiding from God, you think you can't hide anything from God. If, you're, if there are certain things you're hiding from your family, your husband and wife, even at work, even at school, yeah. you got to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. Yes, sir. Unless you resolve that, you cannot have courage. God did not bless Israel when they had sin in the camp. You cannot be blessed by God when you have sin in your life. Amen. You cannot stand up for the Lord like you should. Even if you try, the Lord's not going to bless it. You could read your Bible every day. You could meditate. You could go from Genesis to Revelation, know all the deep doctrines. But if you're doing it out of pride, knowledge, puff is up, right? Yeah. And your intention is to show off to people, the Lord's not going to bless it. That's why I always give caution to especially young people or whoever who's just gotten saved. Get in the book, read the Bible, and know the basic doctrines, and know the theological seminar of the air first. Know the salvation theology. You don't need to go into such a deep stuff, you know, right away, when you can't even tell people and preach to people about the general salvation things, right? Yes. Justification, propitiation, you know, those are very important, right? Yes. Redemption, adoption. They're more important than aliens in the world. Amen. Right? They're more important than the pyramids and the third heaven and all those things. At that point, yes. because you have to drink milk first. And then later on, you could, you'll be able to handle those deep stuff. But I've seen too many people, especially you know, people who find the Bible-believing truth, get into that trap. And then when it's time for you to show some courage for the Lord, preach the gospel, just simple Romans road, you can't do anything. Can we just talk about aliens? You know? You know? Can we talk about those deep galaxy first? You know? And the person is like, I want to know how to go to heaven. Come on. You know? I don't want to burn in hell. Yeah. Man. Well, how is alien going to help me? <laughs> right? So you have to put a right, you know, perspective priority when it comes to the word of God. Yes. And when we read our text, you know, notice that it's a good courage, right? It's not about just a grim resolve, you know, like those. Soldiers, if you've seen their faces, you know, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, you know, they look like a very, very green, sad, down, right? Uh, of course, they've seen bullets flying everywhere. They've seen their, you know, comrades blow up. They've seen, you know, all these horrible things happen to human body, right? But good courage means that you should have a cheerful commitment. When you have that courage, you do it with cheerful heart. 
right? Amen. You're not doing it because, oh, I just have to do it. You know, at least better than people who don't do anything. But well, you got to do it cheerfully. Well, how does an army, small number of armies, defeat these gigantic, impossible numbers in the past? Because everyone in the army had that cheerful heart. They had that cheerful courage. They were strong and giving courage to each other. When was the last time you had that courage in the Lord? It just fed up to your brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Man, that's the way to do ministry. Amen. Because you do it out of cheerful heart because the Lord saved you from hell. Yes. And you want to do something for him after you've gotten saved. And people could see that. Amen. But what if you're this, you know, dark green person all the time? Even when you're out there street preaching, you hate it. You're like, I hope my turn never comes. You're that type of person, right? When it's time for you to preach at the red light, you're like, oh, man, why is my light too long? Are you that type of person? Like, man, when that person preached, you know, light was only 10 seconds, but when I'm preaching, it's like 30 seconds, you know? <laughs> That's not cheerful heart. Right. You're probably like, you know, even though my voice is going out, I wish this light was like one minute, two minutes. Amen. Because I want to... Preach to this lost world out there as much as possible. If you cannot stand for the Lord by standing up for the book, you could have a million dollars, you could have a billion dollars, you'll never be happy. Yes. Because you won't be in the will of God. No. Right? People say, oh, you know, my life will be so much better if I have a million dollars and billion dollars. No your life will be more miserable. Yes. You have more things to worry about. You have more you know, worries than you'll ever have. That's why when you see Joshua, he was the first leader of the people under the authority of the book. Why? That was when Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy were completed. Right? He was, that's why verse 8, you know, let's go back to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, right? Law was completed. Guided by the book. Amen. Guided by the law, right? I mean, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, all got their revelation instruction directly from God. By the time Joshua came along, the laws were completed. So he was the first leader of people under the authority of that book. Now, what about you and me? We have a more sure word of prophecy. What are you doing about it? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Are you seeking voice of the Lord? Are you seeking someone to talk to you? Are you trying to speak in tongues? You know, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Are you looking for the Holy Spirit experience? No. All of those are given by the devil. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father Honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow, you know, this voice is for real. It's from God. But let's continue. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. It's better than the spoken word. Yeah. This Bible is better than the spoken word. Why are you looking for those voices? Go to the book. Go to the Bible. Man, if you're looking for other things, I mean, you're never going to get it. You're going to be deceived by the devil. Verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. 
knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture of is of any private interpretation, and so on. You have this word of God. Uh, words of God. Better than spoken words of God. Yes. Wow. You have this. What are you doing about it? Then I'll go quickly due to time. Then how can you be courageous? How can you be courageous, right? There are four ways of getting courageous from the Bible. You have it. You have the perfect word of God. You can be courageous from the Bible. Number one, you can get courage from reading the book. Just read the book, yes. right? You know, you have to read the Bible. I mean, this is, you have to hear it over and over. I have to hear it over and over. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. You have to study. And in order to do that, you have to read. Just read. You're like, Lord, I need some courage. Hit the book. Hit the book. Simple. You know? Don't go to Dr. Phil. You know, don't go to those people. Go to the book. Amen. Just hit the book. Acts 20, 32 says, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. You have to be built up by the word of God. You're going to be out in the battle fighting to have courage. You need resources. You need equipment. Yes. And this is it. This is all you need. Amen. It's going to build you up. You're like, ah, I'm, I'm lacking courage. Read the book. Amen. Read the Bible. King James Bible. Read it. Read it. And you're going to be built up. You're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, you know that you have a lot of courage when you're out there preaching the word, knowing the verses, memorize the verses, and you know it inside out. Then every time you preach, you know, Romans 10, 9, and 10, you have more power. Yes. Instead of someone just reading out of it, don't even take time to memorize it. Right? It's sad to tell the truth. I, mean, I don't harp on you guys to like memorize things and that, but one time this unsaved person we're preaching comes up to me like, how come if you guys really think it's important, you guys are just reading out of the thing? Shouldn't you guys memorize it? Well, I couldn't say anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if it was dear and important to me, if a person could memorize all this you know, school stuff, how can you not memorize what you're preaching? First month, first week, completely understood, man. But you've been doing this for years and years, and you still have to look at it? It's not that important to you. That's what he tells me. And that unsaved heathen pricked me in the heart. As a whole church. Man, how... Long you've been preaching and you still need to just go back to it over and over yeah. when you can memorize everything to get an A in a classroom, but you can't even do that. I mean, you're a grown up adult. I, mean, I'm not, I don't have to like babysit you and then sit you next to me and make you memorize verse by verse by verse. You're an adult. Do it accordingly. And if your child, children are doing it, and as a parent, you teach them the right way. That's why I said you get courage from speaking the book. So first, you get courage by reading the book, and you get courage by speaking the book. You know, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You got to speak it. You got to keep on talking about it. And then third thing, you can get courage by meditating on the book. Meditate. What does that mean? You know, it's not about just doing Lord's Prayer over and over and over, right? As some might say. It's not vain repetitions right. like he didn't do according to Matthew 6 and 7. So this is talking about when the Bible speaks of meditating the word of God, it is talking about thinking about it and thinking about what you have read in the scriptures and considering how and what you have to do to apply it properly in your Christian life. Dr. Rockman put it the best way. It's a picture of digestion. You read, and you got to digest it. Yes. How are you going to digest it? It's an example of cow. Cow will graze out there in the field. Then it will go down somewhere and bring that food back up and chew it again and again and again. That's why it's called the chewing the cud, right? Mm -hmm. You have to chew it 
over and over and over and over again. That's meditating on it. And think about the ways that you can apply in your life, right? I mean, one verse that we use all the time, abstain from all appearance of evil. Meditate on it. Think about it. Chew on it constantly. So when you see wicked stuff, you avoid it, Amen. right? When you're headed to wicked way, you avoid it, right? Yes. When wicked thing is coming out, you turn it off. Yes. You know, like that's what you got to do. You got to meditate. You got to digest it. And the last thing, you know, you get courage by doing what the book says. Just do it, right? The Bible says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. James 1.22, just do it. You know, now you're reading it, right? I mean, you're meditating, you're speaking, now you just do it. Just do as what he says. And I'll finish with this. We all know General Patton, you know, great general. General Patton said, courage is fear holding on a minute longer. You know, man, you and I might be fearful, man, but you just got to hold on to it. Man, I'm fearful that peop what people might do to me because I stand for the book. But, you know, I'm going to go one minute longer. I'm just going to go and go. Amen. So you can't give up when it comes to courage. You just got to get up and go one more round, yes. right? Man, that, they rejected me. You know what? I'm going to get up one more time, and I'm just going to keep on going. You can't take encouragement from the fact that when you do stand for the Lord, when you have that courage, you know the Lord is with you. No matter what happens to you, you are in his hands and you are in his care. Because our text verse says what? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee just now, just certain time. No, whithersoever thou goest. So think about it. You could hold on a minute longer. Lord's coming back soon. Yes. And you could hold on a minute longer. Just take a minute at a time. Don't look too far behind. It's going to overwhelm you. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm going to take this courage from the book, the word of God, and then I'm going to not give up. I'm just going to go one more round. Last round wasn't the best. Sure. But you know what? I'm in Lord's hand. I'm going to go and go and go. Amen. And if you go on like that, I guarantee you, you're going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what we want to hear from the Lord. That's why courage is necessary. Let's pray. Dear Father, I have to admit first, you know, Lord God, I'm such a coward. I'm just chicken many times. When I should be standing for you, standing for the word of God, I let my flesh take over. Lord God, help us to just confess our sins of being just cowards. Lord God, help us to be courageous. Help us to understand that what we do for you lasts forever, especially when we stand up for you. you know, when we speak the Bible, when we do as what the Bible says. And in order for that to happen, we have to first take care of sins in our life, Lord God. Help us to confess our sins and get right with you. And just be out there and at home, everywhere. Be that light to this lost world. And show courage at all times because it's necessary in serving you. I pray that you bless everyone here. And those who are not saved, Lord, I pray that not another day go by until they get saved and know for sure where they're going after they die. I pray that you bless the rest of the services. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.